All right, so welcome to the talk. It's about creating a one password cloner. We'll be going through what the, the format that they use is and what um, how, how it went around uh, about um, uh, implementing them for my own, you know, for fun and profit. Um, and then we'll see a bit about interesting details about what they what they actually did. So um, it's me, I'm Carlos. I, from a day job is at GitHub. I run the work and the team that runs the Git infrastructure. And for the last few years, almost anything I touch ends up having to implement some encryption. So this time I said, well, let's do something for fun instead of just uh, for work. And the uh, disclaimer, I'm not your crypto expert. So if you want to do, like, I think this, the, the, the steps they've taken here um, at one password that they're interesting. It can be useful to, to learn from them, but you know, consult your own crypto and security expert at your organization before you know, doing stuff. Uh, so um, I expect most of you are going to know, but just uh, to go a bit over what the uh, uh, what one password is, right? So this is a password manager. What they do is they keep track of all your secrets so that you don't have to uh, keep around like a big ledger full of your passwords and all the old passwords, and then you can't find anything. And then you know the alternative is always oh, just use the one password, which isn't good because then you know uh, Equifax gets popped, and then now your Gmail is also popped, which means everything is not popped. And really, the the big advantage of uh, of a password manager is when they have a nice um, a browser integration because then it's easier to create a secure password and just store it and forget about it and just use that one instead of trying to come up with a clever uh, password, which is probably not going to be as secure as you know what the the random number generator in your kernel is going to give them. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, websites have uh, they think they're smart, so they have uh, interesting password requirements. So you have to try a few times, and that's definitely not fun. But you know, you should complain to them rather than the, the password managers. So this is about the uh, one, password, one password vault format, or called OP vault. This is the uh, input and export uh, format. This isn't, what the, this isn't exactly what they use in the application. They use uh, something inside a SQLite database. Uh, but it's essentially the same. This is just the serialized version, as it were. This is what they use for. Um, uh, so it's it, the app calls it a backup, but essentially it's what you uh, dump out to Dropbox or iCloud or rsync, which is how I synced the things this morning, uh, or you know whatever synchronization you have, and that will then uh, it, it it will look in that directory and import if any changes are happening in other machines. Uh, one password itself, except for new developments, which are, have been a bit, uh, where they're trying to actually get your data in the cloud, they're a local. Password manager. That means all the data is just up in your file system, and then you're the one who decides exactly how you distribute the um, these exported uh, backups in case you um, you do want to use multiple machines, uh, right? This is all under under your control. They even have a, a very neat local um, network uh, synchronization, so you can actually synchronize with your uh, phone without actually having to go out through the internet, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this um, URL where they actually document publicly the their format because they <laughs> the old format was was secret and it got it, it wasn't as secure as it could have been so after that they decided okay well let's just make it open this new one that's actually secure and then let everyone know how it is because that's that's how sure we are of the about our format so this is a directory um, they have um, a bunch of files, so you can see here the dot attachment ones are, attach are attachments to, to items. We'll see later how they, these all go together. Essentially, you can have a bunch of secrets, and then you can attach like a picture or whatever is necessary. Um, I think the export went a bit bad. So um, yeah, so you have um, 16 bands, so that's just a bunch of JavaScript files with JSON in them uh, to, to reduce the amount of uh, churn that any particular file has, because this is for the, you know, for Dropbox to have, and Dropbox doesn't necessarily like um, updating all of the files in both machines, and then you get like a weird thing, which you've probably seen if you ever tried to sync uh, Git repositories over Dropbox, which we keep getting comments about. Uh, so then you have a profile, which is your, uh, where all the essentially meta information lives, and then a folder, a directory of folders. Uh, to, to organize things. So how do we then, um, and basically all, almost all of the data here is encrypted. So how do we actually get to encryption? So, you know, we have a key, uh, right, that, that we need to, to encrypt the things, but then where do we put that key? 
we can't put it as plain text on the file system because that defeats the whole point. Um, so we can put it, but we can also encrypt that one, which only solves the problem slightly because now we have another key that we need to store somewhere. However, um, this other key is something that we can create out of the user's master password. So the password you use when you um, first type, when the program starts, you type it in, and then it unlocks everything. Right? That password is the thing that encrypts um, the real encryption key that decrypts your your secrets. Now your you know your your password if you type A right that's not a secure enough key. So what we have is a, a function called uh, PBKDF2, which I can I can never type it directly unless I actually mouth out what it means. Right. So it stands for Password Based Key Derivation Function Two. So the one wasn't good enough. And this is something somewhat similar to uh, Scrypt or Bcrypt uh, that you might know from storing uh, user passwords in your database, except this, instead of trying to create a hash so that we can compare to see if it matches, uh, the output of this is a key of or is, is, you know, some hexadecimal or some, uh, some bytes uh, of a particular length uh, that we can, that's better suited for uh, performing an encryption key. Uh, this also means that, um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, uh, similar to Scrypt and, uh, Bcrypt and Scrypt, it has a um, assault, but it also has a number of rounds or iterations that you can configure. So the the idea being that it should be uh, slow to create to calculate one. So it, it doesn't matter too much when you type in the correct password. Uh, maybe it takes half a second, one second to actually create the key, but it does uh, definitely hurt someone who, who's trying to brute force their way into your uh, your secret vault, and um, we ha we and we, we don't use the um, the key that we get out of your password directly because that also means that we can um, encrypt this the, the real master key with this other password, and then we only have to update one particular field in this one particular file instead of trying to re-encrypt absolutely everything. So it it it, it, has, it means that we c we don't need to um, re-encrypt all of the files and then all of them just stay together and then you you, auto, you can automatically increase the, um, the iteration number, which means as computer gets faster, you can ship an update um, that just says, well, the next update, instead of doing 50,000 iterations, you do 80,000 iterations. And then that that, that that means that you the um, it, it's not increasing the iteration the so sorry re-encrypting the the data out of the password making it more secure is no different from doing a normal export. Um, yeah, so I already got went through this a bit. So one of the things that they um, they also do is a thing called authenticated encryption. Now, this isn't always 100% relevant to an, an offline client because it often requires you to have a conversation. Um, but the, essentially, the the way that you know you you, you might be um, that you might want to do uh, the checksumming of data that you encrypt is oh, you decrypt it and then you compare the checksum of the decrypted data against some um, some checksum that you've recovered from somewhere. Uh, which is fine, except uh, for the kind of um, attacks called chosen ciphertext attack, uh, in which you can mangle the ciphertext a bit, even if you don't know what it contains. And then if you actually can establish a conversation and have the tool tell you whether it's um, the decrypted text then gets mangled in a particular way, you can uh, slowly figure out the plain text without actually ever uh, figuring out what the key is, or without knowing in advance what the key is. Uh, this isn't 100% relevant for a an offline tool because it would just be well. Sorry, I can't load your your vault now. But it does protect um, against any kind of chosen ciphertext attack. So even if someone comes up and figures out a way to sort of stay in your machine for a while and keep twiddling the, the the bits in your vault, then they're still not going to be able to get it because the first thing we do here is um, we check the checksum of the encrypted text. And then we decrypt it. This requires specific cryptographic uh, primitives uh, or functions. Uh, but those luckily also exist in almost any cryptographic library you will have in your system. So the one I'm using for my library is uh, just OpenSSL. Um, but you can also have them with Common Crypto, which is the one from on macOS. 
Uh, and this is the one that they use in the in their app itself, which is a primarily a Mac thing. So uh, now that we know how to create uh, a key out of our password, right, that gives us uh, a 522 bit, 512 key bit. Now that we split into two. One is the encryption key, and one is the Mac key. Uh, the master key is, however, actually two keys is master and overview, but we'll we'll see that in a sec. Um, essentially, what we, we we're using AES two hundred and fifty six, so we only need half of this uh, key, but we still wanted to don't don't want to do multiple times the this PBDK two. Uh, so we create now that we have. Um, now we have the, the password, now we, we, now we have this uh, other key that with that we decrypt the, what's called the, the master key and the overview key. The master key is um, the one you use for the encryption. The overview key is the one you use for encrypting the uh, metadata or the, the sort of high level details of, your, of items or your secrets. So you, for example, this lets you have the, uh, the URL for the website or its title um, listed in the um, in your list of items, so so you can look for them without actually having to decrypt the actual password, uh, so that it, it's less likely that you know someone doing a memory dump will actually find uh, your password somewhere in in your file or in your unencrypted swap if you have that. So this is what the profile.js file looks like. Um, this is it, this the, the the keys are pretty long, so I've sort of elided a few. This this the stuff like uh, the the password hints, uh, rounds, that kind of thing, which is sort of elided here. Uh, now this does look like um, it's been loaded into a JavaScript engine because it's been assigned to a variable. This is necessarily the most, I mean, it, it looks a bit suspect that you're that it looks like you're trying to load in into some JavaScript when you're not supposed to actually trust the the inputs because this is some file from somewhere. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that this is actually vulnerable to anything, but it does looks a bit weird. Um, so you can, as you, you can see here, the iterations are about fifty thousand. I looked uh, this morning, and on my current export is about eighty-three thousand. So they do continually update this data. Uh, so this profile um, comes from the test data that they show up that they show in the, in the web page, where you can actually test if you want to implement something uh, without having to use your own um, uh, your own vault, which you know, so which means you're, you're less likely to actually print out all of your passwords into the terminal for debugging. So let's go back to the kinds of keys. We started with the password, we made that into two keys, and with that we decrypted these other two keys, uh, which are actually two each, um, but I generally treat them as just the one because they, they all both go together. Each, of, each time you get a key, you split them, you split into two. The first half gives you the um, encryption key and the other one is the verification key. So you first use the second half to verify that the encrypted text hasn't been tampered with, and then you can decrypt, and then you can know that at least uh, the right person encrypted the, the, the text, even if you don't necessarily know what, what's inside. And then we can now start um, opening all of the um, all of the items. We can read those band, um, you know, ABC files, and then we can load, and finally we can display to the user what the what, what all the the list of items is. So an item is just what what this thing calls uh, each entry uh, in the database, each uh, secret that it's storing. Um, Almost all of the data is encrypted. There's a few things which are um, like the category, what it's a favorite, uh, the folder it contains. So this is normally this is this is because that way you can actually figure out if something is a, is a favorite. So if the user says, "Oh, show me all of the favorites," you don't even need to bother decrypting the uh, overview to see if it's favorite. However. The first thing the app does when you input the password is to show you ev all, all items from all vaults. So I'm not sure whether they, this was an idea that they had, that, oh, maybe the, some integration will actually want to do this because the app definitely doesn't seem to be taking advantage of this. And the first thing it'll do is just decrypt everything. Well, all of the overviews, right? So the, um, the overview uh, will in, uh, consist of the, um, 
essentially the a date when this was done, uh, some text and some ancillary information. Like you'll, uh, sometimes you'll say, well, you create this password on this date, or this is a credit card uh, for this bank and this person. Uh, they have a lot of um, somewhat specific uh, kinds of um, of items. Like you can have a outdoors license is one specific one. You have credit cards, and they have like a type for each credit card, um, and then some. But then you, most of the time you're just going to have a generic passwords. Um, now this um, each item itself also has its own keys, not for the overview. That one is sort of less secure or is less sensitive. The but now that you once you have your master key for encryption, you can still decrypt this other key pair for each item. This uh, that's. That way, now you can get the to the detail, which is actually the password or the credit card number, or your SSN or whatever. Because the American, they also have uh, this thing, and that means that when you that it, there's only v very little um, actual content that gets encrypted under each particular key, which it doesn't necessarily protect against any known attack, but generally the, the less that you you use any particular key, the less likely it is that you can that you've you've misused it in some way and thus um, you've exposed some data. So the, the less actual secrets that you store under each key, uh, the higher the chance it is that if even if an attack becomes possible, that it's it's less likely that it's gonna hurt you. Um, they do however well, one of the other things that the app, uh, the app uh, that Agile Bits provides, the one password, it also just forgets uh, your password if you um, if you wait too long without you know going into it, or if you close the um, if you close your laptop and it goes to sleep, it also just forget. Uh, this also reduces the you know the chance that someone will manage to go go and get it, but it also means that it's it evacuates the the memory more often because if you were um, I mean, the, the, this overview information isn't considered to be as uh, sensitive, so it's okay if someone sees it a little bit. But you know, it's it's still going to be easier to find that in your uh, in a memory dump or an encrypted swap, like I mentioned, than um, you know, the keys itself, which are also going to be in memory. So it, it, you know, it's, it's it's sort of trying to. Um, to be secure whilst also you know not not asking you for your password for every single thing so it's kept in memory but only some of the keys is it's, it's trying to play around with 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 this trying to to figure out what the um what the recombination is of spending time um you know on behalf of the users just storing keys versus not So uh, one of the uh, interesting things here with the uh, when trying to perform a checksum, so um, it most of the the time you you run this authenticated um, encryption in which you have a chunk of data. However, because all, some of the data inside an item is unencrypted, like the the fave, the category, uh, we don't we can't run the the same process. So they they came up with this other process where. You, you you essentially do the same thing, but you you grab the the data, all of the data, and you store the the HMAC, uh, which includes you know all of the encrypted data plus all of the unencrypted one, um, except obviously for the HMAC entry in the in the field. Now this is a JSON object, so it's all a bunch of strings, um, and you know numbers and booleans are primarily strings. Uh, so, and also because there is JSON, there is no canonical representation for any of this. So you can't just hash the output because there are multiple implementations could just produce anything. So they uh, what they do is you, they have the key and the value. So you have the key, you hash that, and then you put the value as a string, and then you hash that. Um, however, probably because they they wrote this in Objective C, and that doesn't actually have booleans, but only integers. The they have a, they have a single uh, optional boolean in the in the items, which is whether it's been sent to the trash. And it took me a while to figure out because that my I, I could never verify this this one object until I realized that oh right I'm in Rust so I actually have booleans and when I say print me this to strings as bool, but because of the generic dictionary that they're using in uh, in one password implementation, it turns out that it's trying to print a one instead of uh, a, a boolean true. 
So that took way too long to figure out that, you know, that it turns out Booleans aren't always Booleans. I don't know if this is just a, a side effect of them storing things in a, a, in a SQL database where types aren't necessarily a, a real thing. But um, yeah, at least they, they, they yeah, it took a while. It was, um, it's not as clear as it could be, but it's, um, you know, the fine I can manage to read in the end. Uh, attachment, there's not much of them. You can, uh, each attachment uh, specifies what uh, item they uh, they go to. They also have like, an overview and a detail. So an overview, you can say, oh, this is my credit card, or this is my ID, and then the actual um, um, details uh, is just the, the, the image. Generally, will be, I mean, very often it will just be an image. Um, Folders, um, they also have a, a name uh, and a UUID. This is UID is what the items refer to, to say I'm in this folder. Uh, and they do have this particular kind of um, a folder called a smart folder, which can, for example, in the, in the test data, for example, they say, oh, well, uh, show me all of the items that contain attachments. Uh, now, this is, I, <laughs> I assume there was, oh, this is probably like some JavaScript or some Lua and some sandboxy thing that will, that runs through code. But it turns out it's some, something in binary that they don't promise is ever going to stay stable anyway. And it turns out the, the base64 encoded string isn't even a properly encoded string in the, in the test data at least. I think it's like a null somewhere or half a byte is missing or something strange. So, I mean, I don't use them, so I didn't bother too much, but they're, you know, they're there. It's an interesting feature, but it, I guess you'll have to uh, reverse engineer um, this binary format if, uh, if, 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 if you want to write something like this, like something that reads um, these smart folders and, and you're actually using them. So, uh, putting all of this data into, into its own library, right? So, I figured, hey, let's, I should try out something in Rust. Um, you know, because it's, it's, it's the one language I don't get to use usually uh, at work. Um, so I figured, well, okay, you know, I should do this since it's, it's been it's it's public, and then I've managed to um, I managed to to, to live uh, to live. <laughs> I've I've muddled through by using my phone as the other one password client, and then just copying it around. Uh, because luckily, most of the time at uh, work, I can just use my my two FA uh, key to uh, to go into pseudo mode instead of um, having to set my password twenty times a day. Uh, so it was fine, but then I got a bit tired. Um, and of course, the 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 official solution from Agile Bits is oh, you should just run Wine, um, you know, and run the Windows uh, implementation from them uh, in your Debian. Which is like okay, cool, but uh, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it works fine, but that's no, you know, it's gonna be at the point. So, um, you know, I tried to do it. It was like a year ago, roughly. Um, the <laughs> so I mentioned that we have the this overview key plus the master key, and that's what you used for the items and what you use for the attachments and to see the overview versus the details. So I was gonna say, okay, well, I'm a C programmer generally, so I'll just add pointers everywhere. Turns out, you know, Rust says, oh, but you have to prove to me that you're not gonna free you know the vault that actually contains all of this um, all of this data while you're using the other thing, and then I'm like, no, but it's fine. I've been writing C for a decade. Uh, you know, I rarely sec fault. Um, but you know, so so in the end, I sort of took the coward's way out and added a um, um, a, a reference counter around it. Um, it was fine, but you know, I, I, I still want to go back in and, and actually fix it more now that the the, the compiler has better. Um, uh, error messages, so it's not shouting at me at me as much. Um, yeah, and also we'll shout out to Certi, uh, the um, serialization and serialization library. It's very um, versatile. It lets me specify almost like completely what I do in code and, and in sort of statically in compile time, and it'll generate all of the code I want. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so once I, like I mentioned, now we, now we we know how to decode this um, the actual encrypted data, and now we have a bunch of JSON blobs that aren't actually documented because that's application data. Um, so, but at least you know JSON self-documenting or something. So at least we can actually hey see what the keys and values are and just build up a bunch of structs and um, you know just do it. Right, just just have the service, have the deserialization library do it for me. Uh, however, there are 
some things that aren't quite clear whether it's just oh the the way the app someone wrote it and then forgot about it or whatever. But there's um the, the for for when you have a, a login uh, or something you submit it through through a web form and it gets stored you know from your browser from the integration right. Um, they have a a type for a for, for a field that's a password. But then I noticed that half of my uh, passwords were just printed in plain text in my UI that I was writing. I was like, well, what's going on here? It turns out a password is a password when it has a password fi uh, when it has a password type, or when it's a normal text type and its name or its designation are also password. Which for some, like, so the app knows it's a password. It's just it doesn't store it as a password. I'm not sure why that's that's it, right? So this is like a bit of the code I have there. Um, where I'm saying, okay, well, is this a password or does it look like a password? I guess this is what you call duck typing or something. Um, there was also a um, an interesting. So when when you have the, the more specific ones, we have like oh, outdoor license, um, whatever. Uh, it actually has some very specific fields, and most of them are actually strings, but they all have different kinds. Now, in cert, I started doing it. Uh, within uh, each have their own struct because they want it to be proper and you know have types and safety and whatever, right? But then it turns out that they all are this ten that are the same and two that have a uh, different. So at the end of the day, um, this is where my, my second shout to Serta goes because so here we can see K and so this is the key, the name, uh, the value, and then some attributes. The value can be a a number, a string. Or this whole other struct, which is address, and and this is all optional. And certainly, uh, let me just say, hey, there's this value field. It can be one of these three things. Just try them all, and it will just write the code for me that tries to figure. Hey, is this a number? Oh, this matches the number. Uh, is this a string? Okay. Oh, this is another object that has all of these fields. Oh, then I'm going to pack it into this address field, which is another com very specific thing that they have where. Otherwise, it's mostly strings. Um, and on this um, sort of specific versus non-specificity that they have in, in, in a few places, uh, they seem to have this form of get text by default. So um, earlier, uh, you see, oh, this, the, the name or the designation for this uh, field is password. Now, for a bunch of these things, they have a, a designation which, um, so they have a name which is the um, the, the field name in the in, in the browser, but uh, they also have a thing, for example, expiry date, game, whatever. So game is just for the outdoor license, because apparently they have one a very specific field for what kind of animals you're allowed to kill. Um, they they have none of these are actually um, just one slide. That none of these just have um, the English or you know human uh, name of this. They have something that presumably you can check, get text, which is actually cool because most of the time you you're stuck with the the English definitions of things. Uh, whereas here they you know you sort of default to well this is just something and then we're going to update the app as as, as things happen. Uh, so this is the source code. The first one is the um, the library. The second one is the GUI. Uh, you shouldn't use the GUI right now because for, be, for debugging purposes, it will actually print everything into uh, the, the command line uh, if you're running it. So that's it's just going to print out of your passwords. Um, so don't you know don't use that without um, uh, commenting that out. And uh, thanks. <laughs>